it being after six o'clock, uh, we call the board meeting to order for June 2nd. Uh, roll call, please, Emma. You're on mute, Emma. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Director LeHue? Here. Vice President Lather? Here. Director Jaffe? Here. Director Christensen? Here. And President Daniels? I'm here too. Okay. So there is no item two, public hearing. There's none. And so we go on to item three, the announcement by board members of items removed from the consent agenda. So let's get started. Um, Director Lather, do you have anything to uh, pull? Did you say Lather? Yes, I did. Oh, no, I don't. And Tom? Sorry, I forgot, to, I forgot to unmute because yeah. I, I was supposed to mute myself every time I'm not talking. So, right. um, so no, I don't have anything. Thank you. Okay, Director Jaffe. Nothing, Nicole. Okay, and Director Christensen. Well, I'm willing to pull uh, 4.6 that was requested by Becky. I think I think her questions were answered, but uh, she okay. had some other comment. Okay. Then she can make it okay so we'll pull 4.6 so that leaves all the others um so let's go on to item four which is a consent agenda we allow public comment on this up to two minutes and do we have anyone who's signed up for that yes okay bring her online okay one moment Ms. Steinbrenner, Hi. can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, you are now unmuted and ready to go. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, Director Christensen, thank you for pulling uh, consent agenda item 4.6. I appreciate that very much. And so I assume then that that will be put to the end of the agenda. Is that correct? That's our policy, yes. All right, thank you very much. And again, um, Director Christensen, thank you. I'd like to just um, say that I'm very happy that um, the folks on Ulta Drive are going to get a good overlay and repair of the trench of the district's area. I, I thought it was very creative to work with the county and to get them to agree to pitch in $45,000 so that uh, the whole road side to side could be overlaid rather than just the district doing the trench. I think that's a good solution. I do hope that um, the residents who have come and spoken to you about this issue, that their concerns about surface water drainage are addressed in the design and work. I'm very glad that Earthworks got the contract. I have worked with them a lot in my community, and I think they are superb and very good people to work with. So uh, thank you for making that happen and addressing the concerns of the people on Alta Drive. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't think we have any others, do we? No. Nope. Okay. All right. So we then have uh, those consent items except for 4-6. Anyone wish to make this motion? I'll move. Okay. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director LeHue? Yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? He has to un unmute himself. I think so. Bruce? Becca, do you know how to, to unmute he, yourself? His oh. name is. He's not showing up un under anymore. It looks like he dropped off. Okay. So he's trying to sign on now, I think. <laughs> well, Carla, do you have a vote on this? Yes, I vote yes. Okay. And I vote yes as well. So that passes four to X. Got it. Okay, thank you. you. All right. 
So uh, next is the consent agenda. Uh, no, next is the oral and written communications, item five. Um, and I think we have some people wanting to speak on this one as well. Correct. Yes, we have two speakers. Okay. We'll start with Ms. Steinbrenner. And you have three minutes, Ms. Steinbrenner. Thank you. This is Becky Steinbrenner. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can hear you. Thank you. Um, I sent a letter to your board and I didn't have time to check your website to see if it was there posted in correspondence today. But it is a, it is a question piecing together different pieces of information that I have sent you, mostly regarding um, Prop 218 and water pricing. Um, I have sent you the, um, the city's demur on that and with the legality that the city can charge whatever they want for water as long as it's not over what it costs uh, for production and service. So you have the ability to negotiate with the city for um, expanded water rights. And again, I hope that you will start working now to um, extend the pilot uh, surface water pro transfer project. I note in the Santa Cruz City Water Count Commission notes that 33 million gallons were transferred to the district, although it was stopped in January. I've still not received any answer from um, Ms. Leslie Strom about all of those costs for um, testing and payments to the city that have continued to come in months after this project has been stopped, but I'm hoping to get an answer soon. I also want to really impose upon you that you are claiming that this is a very urgent matter. Under that sense of urgency, you have the legal ability stated in a, a very good brief from Best Best and Krieger in 2013 that you can make application to the state for temporary urgency water rights use from the San Lorenzo River during the wet winter months. Doing that would expand your ability to take even more than the 300 acre feet a year that you are, um, that I believe is the number that you're restricted to from the North Coast Streams Agreement. I would like to see you do that. And the reason for that is, is in the wet winter months, it's molecule for molecule. There could be more water coming from the North Coast Streams and it could be coming to you at a negotiated price that would be favorable and with the result that the groundwater levels would be rising, rising on their own and not having um, energy intensive, technology intensive injection into the aquifer, as is the plan. 20 seconds with, left. Thank you. As is the plan with the Pure Water SoCal. I, I want to just close in saying that I've submitted some comment to the um, water board regarding the mid county groundwater. GSP, and um, I do see some very thoughtful, good comments on there. And today is the last day, so if if you and your friends have not done so already, your time is up, Miss Steinbrenner. All yeah. right, thank. You. Okay, so we have a second person, Miss Kirby. You're now unmuted. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. So I put in all the paperwork uh, for my uh, water pressure valve and I haven't heard anything and I saw that the monthly small claims report included it for another guy. Mine's actually quite a bit less, but I was just making sure that that was still in the works. Um, I, Leslie Strom sent me the claim and I filled it out right away and sent it right back. So I just want to make sure that that's still in your, uh, on your radar. And I will say personally, I'm, I'm concerned about uh, uh, giving another raise to Ron Duncan, considering the financial situation. And this is, a, you know, we are the stakeholders and keep raising our rates every year, every, well, every year for however long to, to make sure he's getting a ton of money for his job. When one morning I was, I was at work at 10 o'clock pulling into my driveway and I see him riding by on his bicycle on a weekday at 10 o'clock in the morning. I think him taking a raise, he's already making a lot of money. And I think him taking a raise is very irresponsible considering that this is a rate payer 
company and it's not an you know a stock option thing where people you just have tons and tons of money and especially if the situation's dire with the financials because it sounds like with all these consultants and everything it's going to go in the hole or i know it's going to it that really kind of uh irritates me as being one of the rate payers let me cut you off right there this is a, yeah. an item that is on the agenda so you're i know but i'm just you're, I'm not taking allowed, you're allowed to speak mute, on that item. mute um, and I can tell you that he is not getting a raise. That is his current salary, and he agreed to keep his current salary and go on from there. So there is no raise uh, in being considered. Uh, President uh, Daniels, could I briefly respond to the claim issue? Sure. Um, the, I, we checked um, today, and so far we have not received your claim, Ms. Kirby, but once it is re actually received by the district, we'll process it. Thank you. Can I talk? No, you're done. Thank you. I sent it in. I don't know why. All right, I'll send it all in again. With the uh, COVID problems, things are a little slower than they normally are, but we will be looking for it, as our attorney has said. Um, okay, so that was item five. So we now go to item six, and there's none of the reports. So now we go to item seven, 7.1. 7 we have no will served, or unconditional or conditional. And so we go to item 7.2, the draft 2020-21 budget. So good evening, everybody. Um, this is Leslie Strom, uh, Finance and Business Services Manager. And the draft 2020-21 budget is being brought back before you this evening for consideration and hopefully for approval. A special thanks goes out to Ryan Kinney for all of his expertise and help on this project and to the district managers as well. This is always a collaborative effort and pictures were provided by Director Christensen and Diane Holmes in our billing department and Becca, Taj, Melanie and Ron. For sure, it, it takes a village and I think we have a great village. Um, so we last brought the budget to the May 5th meeting at which time staff was directed to go ahead and proceed with a full budget preparation. The only changes between the May 5th budget and the budget being brought before you this evening is the addition of the stormwater recharge project at Seascape Golf Course for $60,000 in 2020-2021 and another $60,000 in 2021-22. And the reason for the addition is the fact that this project is a collaborative uh, project with the County of Santa Cruz and we were recently notified that it received an integrated regional water management grant from the state so now that we've received the grant we're ready to proceed with the project and the district share of match funds under the grant is going to be one hundred and twenty thousand dollars and we'll break that out between two fiscal years and then the um another budget component that wasn't presented on may 5th were the list of unfunded projects and i'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about any of those projects since this is the first time you're seeing most of them um, I noted in the memo that there were a couple of items in the budget that will be updated in the final draft. The navigation tool where you can click in the upper right hand corner and be directed to the table of contents and you can click on the links in the table of contents. Um, that will be updated once no further changes to the document are necessary. And in addition, new with last year's government finance officers award submission was a section on performance metrics. And some of these metrics are calendar year and others are fiscal year. So these will all be updated and new performance metrics will be added from various departments after the fiscal year end and before we submit the, G uh, the budget to the GFOA budget award. So this is these performance metrics, they're an excellent way for the district to continue to improve on past performance. So the two actions before you tonight are to direct staff to make further revisions and bring the budget back to the June 16th meeting for final adoption or to adopt the budget as final this evening with any minor, minor modifications if necessary. Okay, um, do we have any public comment on this item? Uh, Emma, Becca? Yes, we have one public comment submitted. Okay. You have two minutes. Thank you. This is Becky Steinbrunner. Can you hear yes. me? Thank you very much. I am um, a little curious about page 64 showing the uh, increasing line of water sales. 
when and it's it's increasing and yet at the May 5th meeting Ms. Strom said that water sales were expected to decrease and that's what she projected could cause um, a 1.1 million dollar shortfall so I'm, I'm a little confused about the discrepancies in um, water revenues I also um, would would like to ask I note that on page 143 the total debt service now is $5.4 million, and the district is proposing to add nearly $3 million more to that debt service. I note that um, also on page 143, it describes the bonds, the 2011 bonds for $16.8 million, and the 2013 bonds for $17.52 million. Um, I note the 2013 bonds were supposed to have covered the quail run tank, and that's uh, pretty much dead in the water, it seems, these days. I don't hear you talking about it at all. I note that on page 147, your operating expenses are projected to increase by $5.7 million in the coming year over 2019 and I wonder what's causing that. Finally, thank you very much, Ms. Olin, for the Public Records Act request information. Today I learned that the district collected $5.7 million from ratepayers in the Tier 2 for the Chrome 6 plant that was never built. That is between January 1, 2016 until Judge Burdick at Superior Court ordered it stopped, Time and that was June 30th, 2018. Okay, so um, we'll now go to comments and questions and so forth by the other directors. So let's start with Director uh, Tom LaHue. Hi there. Mm -hmm. um, so I have just some minor things, just like it's more like typos, but I figured I might as well ask them. So um, on page 76, um, of the agenda packet. There's a little area that says employment. And there you go. And in the about the fourth line down, I think this should be compares with an adjusted unemployment rate rather than unadjusted employment rate. It's my guess. Is that correct? I'm sorry, which line are you looking at? Oh, the this compares with an unadjusted employment rate of 5.3% for California? Yeah, should it not be an adjusted unemployment rate? Yeah, that's a kind of Well, it's an un, it is an unadjusted they call it an employment rate, but it's we could call it oh. it would be an unadjusted unemployment rate, but yeah. we could add that. Yeah. yeah that okay, I'm correct. That's, that's how it's referred to on the on the um, on the state website. But we can certainly add. Um, to me, it's confusing to say an employment rate of five point three percent. That's all. Okay. Um, then I had some questions about the graph on page ninety five about the boil water orders. Okay. Um, what is the um, horizontal axis supposed to have as units there? On which page? Oh, right here. 95 at the bottom. Number of boil water orders? Yes. And oh, the one, two, three, four, axis. five? Yes, exactly. Okay, what, it should what, be calendar year. We'll fix okay. that. I, I thought that should be years, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, on 96. Um, this graph on the bottom shows percent of accounts shut off for non-payment. It just, I don't know, just um, graphs that just show a tiny piece of a graph, like without much of a scale, um, no vertical axis, um, and not, it kind of is not perspective really. It just kind of shows just three years. I don't know. I just thought maybe a better graph might be. Well, we'll be adding a fourth year, fourth year this year, but that's as far back as we've tracked that information. Okay, okay, but maybe 
maybe for perspective, I don't know, maybe because that's just such a tiny percent. It just makes it look so large. You know, understand, like if you went from zero to 100 and showed that, it would be like a flat line. And I realize you have to show something. But um, anyway, that was, uh, it's just something I wanted to comment on. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> okay. 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 Otherwise, I will say that um, it's a really uh, well done budget and uh, very easy to read. I liked, I liked all of the, um, I don't know, it seems like it's gotten a lot more easier for me to understand over the years. Um, so, so thank you for that. You are welcome. Okay, Vice President Leader, Michelle. I just wanted to say that I thought you did a beautiful job and I really appreciate all the work. All right, that's something I think all of us feel. Uh, Director Jaffe? Yeah, uh, it's very, very clear. I just had a, a minor question on page 67. Okay. Uh, 67 just, of the packet or 67 of the? Of, of the board package. So okay, perfect. Page 13, 13. of, of 216. Two paragraphs okay. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just on that figure, the figure, which is, is very illuminating, um, but the, the total sources of funds and total use of funds don't match up. They're off by roughly 30, well, 13, 14 13 million. plus, yeah. yeah, 14 million. And I, I think that, uh, there should be some explanation of that, a footnote, something like that. Although it does say that uh, in starting off the 14, uh, that's not the same number, 14.1 million. So that, so that, that's, could you explain that to me? The so yeah, we've got different. some money. We've got some money coming in for debt financing that will roll over to the following fiscal year as well. Okay. Okay. So not all of that is being utilized in the same fiscal year. We've got money coming in from some grant proceeds, money coming in for some interim debt financing, and it will be used to fund cash flow in the following year. Maybe that could be just footnoted or sure yeah just just so that that somebody just looking at that that figure can understand why they don't don't match up but uh yeah no it's very clear and um, and the graphics are are fantastic so i appreciate all the work perfect thank you okay carla you're up next Carla, you're on mute. I just wanted to say uh, this is a re remarkably a comprehensive and clear document, and I'm start the reviewing the draft. And at this point, it's like reviewing a reference a reference document, you know, to help us through uh, figuring out the the budget over the coming year. So I appreciate the work and I'm still digging into it. So okay. um, yes, but it was really, really nicely presented and I feel like I can understand it. So I encourage anybody of the public who's listening to it that they should uh, look at it also. It's a good example of a good budget, budget description. Okay, for me, I, I think it's kind of a misnomer to call this a budget document because this is about the history of the district and the background of the district and you know, what all, all there's the organization of the district and everything. I mean, if you start from zero, you can basically learn all you probably need to know about you know, what we're doing and why and how and everything. So it's, it's an amazing document. And also, I think it's a really beautiful document. It's, it's like like a semi work of art. So it's quite impressive, I think. I, I read it through and 
I, I found it uh, you know, pretty much uh, self-explanatory and clear, and uh, I think it's just great. I, I approve of it. So they're asking for, uh, there's two possibilities for uh, motions. Does anyone wish to make the appropriate one? There the possibilities are. I'll move approval of the final budget. For final adoption today. Pinning, pinning the changes I've got on pages 22, 41, 42, and 13. Those were mine. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will second that. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director LaHue? Yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniels. Definitely yes. Thank you so much for your work on this. Well, great. thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's being done. We now move to item 7.3, a resolution authorizing and directing execution of a revolving credit agreement with COVAC and authorizing and directing additional actions with respect there too. Okay, so this item is mine as well. Um, and so tonight we're bringing item 7.3 before the board to grant the general manager or finance manager through resolution 20-21 the authorization to negotiate any remaining terms and to sign a credit agreement for a revolving credit agreement with CoBank. And CoBank is a national cooperative bank that provides loans to rural providers. Because of the size of the district's unincorporated area, we meet their qualifications as a rural water provider. <laughs> so CoBank is headquartered in Denver, Colorado. Go Broncos. Um, and tonight we also have with us Greg Schwartz from Piper Sandler, the district's financial advisors, and James Worsniak from Jones Hall, who is our bond counsel. And they are available to answer any questions you might have about either the resolution or the proposed debt instrument. So the request is for a $75 million revolving credit agreement, and that works kind of like a credit card. Once the funds have been repaid, they are available to draw again. The 75 million is to cover cash flow while reimbursements are pending from state and federal funding institutions, and those are the grants, the SWIC loan, and the WIFIA loan. So once these funds are received from the, from the uh, grants, the SWIC loans, or the WIFIA loans, they'll be used to pay down the CoBank revolving credit agreement. There is a rate for the funds that are drawn, um, which is the variable rate based on LIBOR plus three quarters of a percent. And LIBOR is the London Interbank Offered Rate. And it is a benchmark interest rate for these types of loans. The one month LIBOR right now is at 0.178%. And then you would add three quarters of a percent to that. And that would be our rate if we were to draw down funds right now. But the draw rate will change every time money with is, is withdrawn. It's a variable rate. The other rate is the undrawn rate. And it's a standby rate for the funds that are not being used but are available for our use. And the undrawn rate will be a fixed three quarters of a percent. And so the interim finance team, we looked at a variety of borrowing options, and it is felt that this option probably provides the most flexibility and is more beneficial for our interim financing needs. And we're happy to answer any questions you might have about either the resolution or the agreement. We hope to close this interim um, financing loan by June 11th. Mm -hmm. Do we, any, do we have any public comment on this? Yes, we have one speaker. Okay. Ms. Steinbrenner, you're now unmuted. Thank you. This is Becky Steinbrenner. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, I think it's quite shocking that your district is uh, now going to go out a further debt of $75 million. It's an excellent rate. You've got the money at, but it's still debt and it's still $75 million for a project that, again, I will hold is unnecessary if you were to pursue um, water transfer 
avenues with expanded water rights, temporary water rights urgency. I think that um, I would like to hear some uh, figures about the anticipated debt burden. Maybe that's already kind of folded in to your budget. But um, I think that your ratepayers need to have some explanation of if you've received so much money in grants and loans, why are you having to go out right now for an additional $75 million loan to support the Pure Water SoCal project? I think it's completely unfounded. Thank you. I would like explanation, please. Oh, one more question. Uh, what advantage was it to be considered a rural water provider versus an urban water provider? I would like that answered, please. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so we will now go to comments and uh, questions and so forth. And first up, as always, is Tom. <laughs> Don't mute yourself, Director Lehu. Sorry, I'm on. Um, so I just wanted to correct a little misinformation first, and that's that we can get an adequate uh, supply of water by water transfer. And the other is to explain that this is not additional financing. This is financing that's an interim finance that financing that allows us to proceed and then be reimbursed by the grants and low interest loans that we have worked so hard to get. So um, anyway, so I, I get a little tired of the misinformation. So I had to explain that. And then I just have a question on page 272. Um, there's a thing I just need somebody to help me understand. And that's the paragraph on pledge source of repayment. So I read it several times, and I just wonder if somebody could do a little primer on that one. So the pledge source of repayment is what we call um, net water revenues or net revenues. So we're pledging our net revenues. That would be our water sales and service charges, all of our revenues, less our operating expenses. And that is our net revenues available for debt coverage. We do the same kind of calculation when we calculate our debt coverage ratio. We take all of our revenues, and from that we deduct our operating expenses, and what's left is what we have available to spend on, um, on debt. So those net revenues are what we are pledging to repay this debt. And I think we did similar things for our COPE, uh, our two COPE loans, right? Yeah, but it, on the last paragraph, it was saying it's restructured to provide for repayment of principal over a number of years instead of a one time on termination of the credit agreement and pledge convert into a parity pledge of net review. Okay, so right, right okay. now, right now, these um, the way it stands now, the 2011 and the 2013 certificates of participation do not allow us to borrow from CoBank on parity with their issuances on an equal footing. So that means that CoBank right now is a subordinate pledge, which means we would have to pay the other two off before CoBank, or we'd have to make the other two debt payments before CoBank could get their money. So what we intend to do is we intend to go ahead and refund the 2011 and 2013 certificates of participation so that we can bring this agreement up to parity with those other two refunded agreements. That's all we're trying to do is make all of them equal in terms of who has a lien against our net revenues. So one's not subordinate, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and Leslie, if I might, it's James Wozniak at Jones Hall, uh, Bond Council to the district. Nice to be with you tonight. And, and just to confirm what Leslie just articulated, the way the legal documents for the 2011 certificates and the 2013 certificates uh, are set up, basically they would look at the revolving line of credit as if you'd have to pay back, you know, 25 million of principal potentially on a single date. And so that kind of lump sum payment uh, doesn't really fit within 
the 11s and 13s authorized additional indebtedness. So as Leslie mentioned, if we refund the 11s and the 13s, or if CoBank allows us to kind of repay them over time instead of a lump sum, then we could fit within the legal documents and they could be on a parity uh, basis. And CoBank is, has been fine. They understand the structure and, and they're fine with that. Thank you, James. Okay, Vice President Lather. So you've been very busy, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like you have good company that helped you and got great support. And I'm um, very impressed by this and thankful that we found a um, bank that would do this. Yeah, we're excited about the opportunity. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. So, Director Jaffe. So, um, as I under <clears throat> understand it, um, we this is just allows us to to borrow money, but does not commit us to borrowing money. Correct. This is a line of credit or a um, revolving credit agreement. So we only draw what we need when we need it, and then we repay it with the money coming in from the state and federal uh, grants and loans. Okay. Well, I just to wanted be, to clarify this. To be, to, be clear, to be clear to his question, we have to pay the three quarter percent whether we draw it out as a loan or it sits there waiting to be drawn out. Right, right. right. So, the three quarter of the percent is, for, is the undrawn rate and that's whether we take the money or not. Right. That's a pretty low interest rate, though, and it's only for the next couple of years while we get through to the project completion. Right. But I just want to be clear that we all understand it. Uh, yeah. We okay. All right. Uh, Director Christensen. Carla. Oh, hi. Can you, if I off saying I've been on mute too many times so far. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I just want to also say for anybody else. In, who's listening who doesn't understand all of our we have thanks to the district's strong efforts to get money to pay for this important project that it, most uh, most of the, that money requires that we come up with some form of we pay for items and then get reimbursement from the state or from the government governing um, granting agency and so we I really am so grateful that we have this source, which is a very reasonable cost to, to provide a, a way to pay for this project and, to, and get reimbursed for it by our grants. So it's really just a very uh, remarkable and the interest rates, this is the time to strike on this. It's just amazing. So uh, I, pr I appreciate all the work that's been done to get us to this point and I just applaud you for that. Just to clarify, we should also mention that it's not just the grants, even the loans. We mm -hmm. have to first build that part of the project, pay the uh, consultant for that part of the project, and then submit that bill to the state now or the, or the feds and for their loans to then come back to us. So uh, that's uh, pretty, pretty onerous. I mean, unlike, a, say, if you're buying a car, you go get the loan and use the loan to buy the car, and you don't have to buy the car and then get the bill for the car and then submit the money to the, the, the car place. And then finally you get your loan reimbursed for that loan that you originally got. So it's, it's a little different, but it's a good. Um, I have a question on page 11 of the document, page 292 of the document. Um, it mentions our grant of 50 million, but then it mentions a $30 million low cost loan from the state water board and i think it's supposed to be 36 in fact 36 is the number that was mentioned back in our financial uh, uh plan that we did just the previous item so I yes um it is a 36 million dollar loan um from the state water resources control board um for the seawater intrusion control program Right. And we did speak with them last week. And what CoBank was trying to do was they were trying to get assurance 
on the amount, and I don't know if you remember uh, the State Water Resources Control Board, their, their group saying that it was up to a $36 million loan, but they were still waiting to find out the exact dollar amount of the loan. We won't know that until we execute the loan probably in January. Okay. So what CoBank is saying by stating the 30 million is they're just giving us a little bit of a window okay. if it were to come in less than 36 million, but we don't believe it's going to. Okay. The last we heard was 36 million and change. So okay. I just wanted that, to that was it. I just wanted to make a comment again, since you had mentioned it in these documents, Leslie, and, and that's that, you know, the, the federal EPA, the state water board, all by giving us this, these funds are, are also saying that this is a project that is exactly what they want to see. So um, anyway, I just, um, I wanted to point that out. And if it's okay, I'd like to make the motion to approve it. Uh, I, I wasn't quite done yet, if you don't mind. Sorry there, sir. No problem. Um, so um, I had a, had a concern. I, I know that we're only getting 25 million right now, and then eventually that goes to 75 million. Um, and then, and then so it, and that's assuming that you know the 75 million is all going to need to kind of get through the entire process. Um, but as we're getting through the entire process, um, we're going to need less and less of that 75 million. Is there any language in here that allows us to reduce that 75 million and therefore reduce the three quarter percent payment on that? Because this might you know, dribble out for years, given the way reimbursement sometimes happens. So I'm gonna. I, Greg, are you on the? Are you on the line still? Uh, yes, uh, Leslie, um, I'm, I'm assuming you can hear me. And, yes. Uh, so uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Daniel's question, um, it's been our experience that CoBank is very receptive to going from a maximum of $75 million to a lower amount to reduce that what I call the non-draw fee. Right. Uh, another option is what we're still uh, going to work through with Leslie is to uh, keep it at 75 million uh, for authorization, but we may originate it at a lower amount, and it all depends upon cash flows. Just, just remember that this co-bank interim finance, even the undrawn rate or the not drawn rate, is lower than either uh, the expected rate for Wipia and the expected rate for um, the, um, the seawater intrusion control loan. So at the end of the day, um, you know, you, um, you are paying a much lower amount um, in terms of interest. And it's essential to note that both WIPIA and the uh, seawater intrusion control loan, you draw from those loans as you Costs. You don't get proceeds up front. You don't pay any interest until you draw. Uh, but when you do draw, those rates will be higher than what um, the interim finance uh, will be, at least for the next three years. Um, but to, to more directly, yes, we will have the opportunity to either set a lower maximum and or negotiate uh, with co-bank at a future date to reset it at a lower amount. Okay. That's, that's, been, our, that's, that's been our experience elsewhere. Uh, I have used co-bank um, throughout uh, my career and um, you know that's been our experience where you know, it's good to go in with a maximum. If it proves to be too much then you can always negotiate. They're motivated uh, to be you know they're they, they are a bank, but they are a, a federal chartered bank and sort of public um, private entity. And so their motivation is to serve and not to make as, as much income as a typical bank. So those okay. are that's, modifying it. That's good to hear because I know that you know in the past there have been times when some of these agencies have been spending like a year and a half to you know basically give you the money that you, you 
to get from Moses Lounge. And so the notion of paying, you know, what is it, something like uh, uh, five or six million dollars a year when you're not actually using the money or don't need the money uh, would be a little tough to take. So glad to hear that. Yeah. Um, as it stands right now, the um, the the maximum uh, if you don't draw anything, the maximum um, expense interest expense would be um, about uh, six hundred and fifty thousand a year for three years. If you drew right. nothing, That's but right. it's going to be drawing, um, so it'll be slightly higher than that. Right. Okay. Uh, one last question. Uh, I'm as everyone I looks like is amazed at how low the LIBOR rate is. So I was wondering, Leslie, are you thinking about pulling in the full 25 million we have right as soon as we apply um, to basically lock in the, that low rate? Um, that's, um, that's something we'll certainly discuss. Um, I do know that we're still negotiating some of the terms in terms of how rapidly um, after receiving grant and with you funding, we need to turn around and, and pay that back to CoBank. We're still negotiating some of those uh, smaller terms. But yeah, I mean, that's a thought is to go ahead and draw it at an extremely low LIBOR. Um, I, I, think we're gonna, I think we're gonna be surprised though as this project ramps up over the next year or two, how, how quickly we move through that. <laughs> yeah, well, at some point then we'll be able to draw the 75 million, uh, yeah. the, rest, the rest of the 75 million, 50 million. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I am done, and I think Tom is in the process of making a motion here. Yes. Uh, I'd like to approve resolution 20-21. I'd like to second it. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director LaHue? Yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? You're on mute, Jaffe. Can you hear it all? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Okay. Carla? Yes. Director Christensen and President Daniels. Yes. So that passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. So we now move on to item 7.4, Peelwater Soquel, the uh, Recharge as Wells Project. Bid award and approval of scope of work for construction oversight. Yeah, good evening. This is Taj Dufour, the engineering manager. And uh, there's actually two items in the title for you to consider tonight. The uh, bid award to the well drilling contractor and then also the uh, scope of work from Montgomery and Associates to oversee that work. Um, we have <clears throat> we had a low bidder that withdrew their bid and we did consult with BBK and um, they did confirm that it was within the time frame and, and uh, criteria that uh, they were able to do so. Um, but the good news is, is that the second lowest bidder, Zim Industries, has worked for the district in the past. They drilled the O'Neill well, and um, they're very qualified to perform this work. So the memo describes the work um, there is some additional redevelopment work at the Twin Lakes Church well. Um, that well will become a full-scale uh, recharge well in addition to the Willowbrook recharge well site and then the Monterey well site. Um, there's um, some additional work at the Monterey well site including demolishing the existing well and removing a lot of the infrastructure that is already there as that well was used as a iron and manganese production well um, removal plant that was that was there. Um, so uh, we are uh, making the recommendation to consider award to Zim Industries, um, and then also um, Montgomery and Associates has pro provided a proposal to oversee all three of those components, the projects. Um, and we also, we've reviewed that uh, scope of work. And you know, the good news is, is if, if Zim completes the job in a very quick manner, then we'll, we won't be paying the, the, the full scope of work. It is definitely 
based on their their time on the job and um, they are out of town and so they have a, a incentive to be very efficient to do this job relatively quickly that'll be good for the neighbors and that'll also be good for the district and the district's customers when it comes to the the costs the the project is um, going to follow the mitigation and monitoring requirements uh, spelled out by the EIR and um, we've already initiated some of those efforts and I can uh, be available for any questions. I do remind you that this item is related to a uh, existing continuing litigation and so we should be mindful of the discussion. Okay. So is there any public comment on this item? Am there, I is, there is. Ms. Steinbrenner, you are now unmuted. Thank you. You have two, you. You have two minutes. Becky. So you can hear me? Oh. Yes. All right, thank you. Um, I, I think it's interesting that this company from Fresno will be coming here. I am wondering where their workers will stay. This county presently only um, has hotel use for essential use. And um, I know that Perhaps you think it's that, but this is construction and you're bringing people in from out of county um, at a time when there is a pandemic. So I question your wisdom of doing this project right now at this time. I note that this will cost a total of um, $3.3 million between the two contracts. I have a question about the Willowbrook uh, site. I sent communication to Ms. Strom that was not answered and sent it to the board. Uh, regarding the Willowbrook site, I see communication regarding Mr. Darius Mosion, whose water demand offset funds were repaid to him to the tune of $31,738 for his property water demand offsets on uh, Abbey Road. I also saw that the district paid Capitola Pump to go to Abbey Road under the um, key, if you will, of Willowbrook Seawater Intrusion uh, Project Injection Well, but it went to Abbey Road Well Services. So are you moving the Willowbrook Injection Well site to Abbey Road? I looked at that site today and noted it's a large a lot empty. There is a house in a uh, stage of being constructed. So I'm wondering what kind of agreements have been made here if you are moving the Willowbrook well to the Abbey Road site. I also do not see anything in the plans about diesel uh, generators up. or water. Okay, so anyone else for public comment? No. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, so we start again. Comments, questions, so forth. Um, Dr. Tom. I, yeah, no, I have no questions. I'm just happy to be seeing things moving forward. Thank you. Rochelle? Um, no, no questions. I, it's kind of unusual to have a bidder mess up, but yeah. that's completely, you know, happens. Um, so I'm glad that we had a good second bid. Yeah. Rose? Yeah, just uh, so Taj, I hear you correctly that the project is completed more quickly than anticipated. The Montgomery and Associates uh, uh, won't be billing for the full amount of the contract. That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good for us. Yep. Carla? Uh, yeah, I just had a, a question uh, about, uh, I, I'm sure you've already told me this, but why uh, we have to destroy the Monterey well. I was just curious, curious about that and said it can't be reconditioned or um, I can't remember what, what was going on with that right now. Um, yeah, the well, the condition of the well is is not suitable, um, and the effort to recondition it is, is 
probably not worth the return. Uh, uh -huh. The casing okay. was, was rusting and corroding and, and has holes in it. And in the mid 2000s, we put in a PVC liner with an attempt to try to, you know, buy some time with it as a production well. And that didn't work out either. So <clears throat> it's, a, it's a cable tool uh, drilled well and it is mm -hmm. very old and so mm -hmm. it's better off to you know destroy it according to the department of water resources bulletin uh -huh. and move over 10 or so feet and, and drill a brand new well that has actually has stainless steel um, casing and is um, sized appropriately the, the diameter of the existing well is is not suitable either okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I kind of remember some discussion about that, but I don't know. I just it was drawing a blank. I'm glad to see it's just it's able to happen. So, Well, we'll feeling. open up um, tours if you guys wish to visit the sites. We are planning to start the Willowbrook Well site um, in about one month. Okay. I'd so, be interested. I'd be in touch. So, Taj, I just have one question. I know we need to, at some point, drill some monitoring wells. And I was wondering why we didn't do that while Zim is you know, deployed here uh, instead of just starting again from scratch. Later yeah. on. Well, that's a good question. And that did, uh, was one option that we considered, but we, we hadn't yet um, confirmed with the state the location of those. And so we didn't know how long. And in addition to that, there are some. Um, property negotiations associated with those monitoring wells. And we didn't want to have a contractor that may be on standby um, for those to be wrapped up. So they're definitely not a critical path item on the schedule. Right, right. We will invite Zim um, to bid that job if, if they are willing. It would, be, it would be different equipment anyway. I know. I know. Um, and so, yeah, there'll be a separate bid pack <coughs> package and, um, you know, we'll, we want to also get started as soon as these wells are drilled with the infrastructure, um, and that is currently in design, the design phase right now. So there won't be any lag time, and we'll roll right into the site infrastructure after these are drilled, and then in the meantime, we'll get the wells for the monitoring um, bit out. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, uh, that's all I have. Um, so someone wished to, there are four proposed um, motions here. Anyone wish to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to move for two, three, four, and five. Okay. Anyone wish to second that? I'll second. We have a second. Roll call, please. Director LaHue. Yes. <laughs> Vice President Lather. Yes. Director Jaffe. Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniels? Yes. So that one passes unanimously. And so we now move on to item 7.5 approved bid award and authorized general manager to sign a professional services agreement and purchase order with Water Systems Consulting to prepare the urban water management plan. <laughs> Who's doing this one? Shelly Flock, um, let's see, can you hear me? Shelly? Shelly, you're on mute. It doesn't show she's on mute. Hmm. Well, if she doesn't come on, I will take this one up. You can hear me, I assume. I can. Okay. And also just to remind Shelly, she could always call in on her phone um, and be able to speak that way. Yeah. I'll be glad to uh, carry this until Shelly comes on. I don't think she'd mind. Um, so, you know, we're required to do the urban water management plan every five years. And Shelly's done a bang up job with the consultants over the last couple, you know, renditions of this thing. And it's a really important document. So we went out to, uh, we solicited, uh, you know, uh, proposals from firms and three of them uh, submitted as shown there in the document. And they created a review committee and they selected Water Systems Consulting uh, 
as the appropriate firm. And that is a firm that uh, created, worked with us to create the previous urban water management plan, well recognized in the industry. And uh, that's what staff's recommendation is to, to move forward with them. And Shelly, if you're on, please chime in if you, if you like. Um, but, and there's two motions in front of you to approve the bid award to pre prepare the ump, um, uh, and then also to authorize the general manager to sign the agreement and, and a purchase order in the amount not to exceed $83,375. Do we have any public comment for this item? Emma? Rebecca? We do. Okay. Ms. Steinbrenner, you are now unmuted. Thank you. This is Becky Steinbrenner. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm really happy that the district is moving forward to get this document going. It's a marvelous document. I've looked through the 2015 uh, Urban Water Management Report, and it's, it's a great document. So I'm glad that you are updating it and note that it will need to be done. Uh, by July 1st of 2021. That's a lot of work to do in one year. I do wonder how many public hearings um, will be provided for the public to review. You did do that uh, very well last time, and I'm hoping that you will do so again this time. It may be a bit challenging depending on what um, the world is looking like then, but I hope that you will hold public hearings more than one to really help people see what is in this document. It's an excellent bit of information. And uh, thank you for moving it forward on it. Okay, thank you. So, Tom, do you have any comments or questions? I do not. Michelle? Nothing. Kathy? Uh, yeah, I noticed that under the consultant selection process um, on page 370, the second paragraph in, the, in that section, it, it uh, talks about, uh, well, first that the bids were close to each other, it was, which is good, but there was, uh, I think maybe that's not where it was, but somewhere I read that, oh yeah, the next paragraph down on contracting and budgeting. Um, so the agreement had not been finalized upon the writing of this memo. So has it been finalized now? No, we're still um, working on it. Um, this is Shelly Flock, the conservation manager. Sorry, I wasn't able to present this item. Um, we are having the proposed changes by WSC Water Systems Consulting reviewed by um, Josh currently, and so we're awaiting uh, legal feedback on those changes. And, and this is Josh, and apologies for the delay on this one, but we'll have comments to Shelley tomorrow to get this finalized. Okay, but no, no anticipated uh, problems? I, I don't anticipate some problems. The only remaining contract items are just um, indemnity, limitation of liability stuff that we can normally resolve um, without any issue. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I guess Carl is next. Okay, yeah, well, I'm glad to see. Uh, uh, I like the work that they did for the last report. I thought it was very good and I have no other comment than that that I think that it, I'm sure this was a very good choice. It was a qualified qualified committee to review the proposals and um, glad to see it. So thank you. I'm uh, as well looking forward to seeing this and uh, so let's, uh, let's look, make a motion on it. Are these I'll two? motion. I'll, I'll make it. I'll, oh, let Bruce do it. It's okay. I'll make the motions. Okay. Both I'll second it. I'll second it. Okay, I'll we'll make the second. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director LeHue? Yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniels? Yes. 
So we now go back to item, what's the number? 4.6 of the consent agenda. 4.6. And we have public comment on this, I think? Yes. Ms. Steinbrenner, you're now unmuted. Thank you, this is Becky Steinbrenner. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Again, uh, Director Christensen, thank you for obliging my request to pull this item. I am concerned because I feel like the Brown Act may have been violated. I know you take that very seriously, the Brown Act. And so I was surprised to see that um, this contract agreement is there. Now what has made it uh, difficult to really determine whether the Brown Act was violated or not is that you have no draft minutes available for the um, the May 19th meeting. So we have no, the public has no idea about what the reportable actions were. There also is no video recording posted on your website. So again, the public has no idea about what the reportable actions were from closed session. So um, to further complicate it, the source on your website for employee uh, salaries is gives um, inaccurate information apparently if Mr. Duncan's salary is what it is stated in the um, contract agreement in item 4.6 then the information on your website is incorrect because it is a different lower figure. The website that um, Mr. Brown uh, sent me yesterday to defend that Mr. Duncan is not getting any pay raise, that website is broken. And I replied to uh, Mr. Brown with a screenshot showing that it is a broken link. So the public has no information and the information that we have is inaccurate or not, not available. And I just think that it would behoove you to postpone this, to clear up the issue, and to um, make it very transparent. Your time is now up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Josh, do you wish to say anything about uh, this comment? Yes, yes please. Um, please go ahead. Yeah, regarding the Brown Act compliance, um, you know, there were, there were two closed session items last, uh, last meeting. Um, one of those involved labor negotiations, um, which allowed the board to discuss without Ron in, in present the details of his agreement. Um, but that does not allow the board to approve that agreement and no approval of that agreement took place. And that's why this item is on open session um, for the, um, uh, before you tonight. Um, in addition, on the uh, uh, question related to um, Mr. Duncan's salary, um, you know, as President Daniels mentioned earlier, uh, there is no re recommended adjustment to that salary. That is currently uh, Mr. Duncan's salary. And we did double check the website and the link for the current um, schedule is working for us. Um, so Ms. Steinbrenner, I, um, you, we'd be happy to work with you on that. It may be a technical issue on, on your end, but the uh, listed salary um, schedule is what's being proposed. Okay. So we need an approval, a motion here. I'll move. I'll move. Approve. Okay, see the, we're always <laughs> fighting, Carla. <laughs> no, we're not. I defer to you. You do it. Oh, thank you. I make the motion. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay, so the motion is second. Roll call, please. Director LeHugh. I think we are very lucky to have Ron. He is a good leader and his integrity is unmatched. And so thank you, Ron. I vote yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? We're very fortunate to have Ron leading us. Thank you, Ron. Yes. Director Christensen? Uh, yes. And President Daniels? I'd say that not only is he, is he leading this well, he's leading this well in a very crazy time with huge amounts of projects going on and every, every kind of craziness you can imagine. So yes, we're very lucky to have him. I vote yes. That passes unanimously. We are now trying to move to close, closed session, and we have two items on closed session. 
Do we have an oral comment about this? We do have one commenter for this item. About both items or just one? Emma? It was on 8.0 as a whole, so it will okay. be on both. Okay. okay. Thanks. You have two minutes. Ms. Steinbrunner, you're now unmuted. Thank you. This is Becky Steinbrunner. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, I want to speak to um, item 8.2. I, I, I am aware of what the other action is about, but I'm not as familiar with it as I obviously am the other. I want to let your board know that I am um, unavailable for any court action until July 1st, and I have confirmed that with your counsel, and I have filed the proper uh, forms with the Court of Appeal, and they, they, are, uh, they are filed and, and public. So I want to uh, just let you know that it is disturbing to me to see the district continue to go full bore on this with little regard to the significance, with little respect to what I am bringing to the courts and in my appeal to try to get your district to address that should have been addressed at the very beginning. And again, I'm doing this for public benefit. It is not just me. There are many, many, many people that are behind me. And I want to just emphasize to you, I am doing this for public benefit because I am concerned about not only the financial situation you're putting your ratepayers into, their bills are going higher and higher all the time, but also just the environmental implications of a project like this. 30 seconds. Thank you. So I want to just impress upon you, I'm doing this in, in the interest of the public, in the interest of the environment, and I fully intend to pursue it. Despite your moving forward, I will not give up. And this needs to have a more thorough legal analysis than what was given in Santa Cruz County Superior Court. And I'm looking forward to the Court of Appeals decision. Time's up. Thank you. Okay, so now all the directors need to go out of this session and you were sent another session of Microsoft Teams where we will have our closed session. Closed session adjourned at 747. There is no reportable action.